Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to cover the div, span, and p tag. The reason why I'm grouping them together is because they're what I call organizational container tags. Their sole purpose is just to serve as containers for other elements on the page. Let's get started. Before we get into the code, let me show you um, what the tags will look like, a graphical rep representation of them. So let's say I have my page here. For a div tag, a div is a block style tag, and block means it's going to take up the entire width of the page. So it's going to look like that. And of course, this border is invisible. You won't be able to see it on the page. But let's say I have a div tag, and then I just had a few letters in it. And even though there's only three letters, and it only takes up this small portion, the div tag itself will take up the entire row. If you were to put something else after div, it'll jump down to the next line over here. And then we'll see that when we when we um, do the actual HTML and, and see it on the, the browser itself. The next tag is span. Span is the opposite of a block tag. It's called inline. So if, again, I had just A, B, C, the span element would be just big enough to fit the, the contents of, um, of what it's surrounding. So this is a block element or block tag, and this is what's called inline. And the third tag we'll look at today is P. P is for paragraph, and P is also a block, a block element, but it's a little bit um, more generous with the space around the content. Um, so if I just had A, B, C here, you'll notice that there's some extra space here. And that's because out of the box, by default, the P tag has this extra space. So if you put another element, they'll be down here. And when you can't see this border, you'll notice that A, B, C is up here. There'll be a gap. And then some other stuff will be down there. OK, let's see this in action in HTML put my pen away and bring up my site. And I'm going to edit this in Notepad++ once again. So the first thing we're going to add is a div tag. And we're just going to put some simple text in there. Oops, we need the closing tag. And I'm going to put another div right below it just to show you what it's going to look like. Save this, and we'll view this in our Chrome browser. Let me zoom in. OK, and as you notice, um, just as, as it drew, the div element, you can't see the border, but it actually takes up the entire row, and it pushes the next element, div 2, right below it. A good way to visualize this also is if you right click on um, the element itself, and then select Inspect. You can see the HTML. And when you mouse over the HTML, you can actually see highlighted in blue above the, the actual shape of the element. So this first div is the entire row fitting the entire width of the browser, as well as the second div. And we're going to do this again with a span and paragraph so you can see what it looks like. OK, let's add our span tags. Go ahead and save this and refresh. And as you see, because span is an inline element, it doesn't push the next element to the next, uh, next line. It puts it right after the first one. And I'm going to mouse over span one. And you can see that the span element is just wide enough to fit the text span one. And the same for, for span two. And now let's add the p tag. Let's 
save, refresh, and it pushed it out of the screen. Okay. So here we have the p tag, and as I mentioned before, the p tag is a block element, so it takes up the entire width of the browser, but it also adds some space below and above the, the, the element itself. So when I mouse over p1, you can see that the blue is the area that the text goes in, and the orange above and below is the space that the p tag adds by default. Now, when I say by default, I mean this is the the default behavior of this tag. As with any tag, you can override it with style sheets or extra attributes, but in this case, we're gonna leave it as a default just to demonstrate what it'll look like if you use the p tag um, unmodified. And there's p2. So you might be wondering why have these tags? Why not use the line break tag to create a new line? Um, what's the point? And as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, these are organizational container tags. So they're used in a way to organize your site um, so that you don't have to, uh, so, so it's easier to, to manipulate and reorganize your page without having to um, edit the text itself. I'll, I'll show you an example. Let me bring up the, the artboard once more. So let's say you have three pages in your site. And with any good website, your pages have a consistent look and feel. So I have uh, page one, you know, maybe your about page, page two, it might be your contact page, and page three, it might be, I don't know, uh, uh, your blog, or not a bad example, but it's page three, I don't know. And because you want it to have a consistent look, each page are gonna have an image, some kind of banner image at the top, Oops, it's kind of crooked, I'm sorry. Um, and then we're gonna have a title here. So I'm just gonna, you know, write some, a, a big title, make it bigger so you know it's title. And then let's say you had four paragraphs. It can vary, but let's say four paragraphs here. So you have one paragraph here, one, let's say three. I'm gonna, I'm running out of room. Three paragraphs. If you went without using the div span or p tag, you would just have a bunch of line breaks here, you know, line line break there, line break here, line break there to break up your paragraphs, um, and then you would have these also on on these pages, you know, paragraph and line break with a with your br tag, and then same thing on this third page. The issue with this is now let's say you wanted to modify the look and feel of your site instead of your paragraphs being in rows, you wanted them in columns. To do this with the way your pages are now, you'd have to go into this HTML and then open this up and change this so that, okay, now let me just erase this. Is that the eraser? Yes. Now I have to go ahead and and write text there, a bunch of line breaks. Okay, save that, then go to the next file. Reformat it into three columns. And so forth with the third file and it, and it I'm sorry, uh, with the third page and any other pages you might have, because I'm sure your site will have more than three pages. And as you can see, this can be a pain, especially if you wanted to change your, your format multiple times. And this is where the div span and uh, p tag comes in. The It's for organizational purposes. So let's just start all over and do this the correct way. I'm gonna delete these guys.
and this is getting into the realm of CSS because that's what we're going to utilize. But if you plan ahead and create your page this way, you can later on apply CSS when you learn CSS and it, your life would be a lot easier. So for the title, I'm going to put it, I can use an H tag, but for this case, I'm just going to say it's a div, right? Div tag. And then my, my title is going to be here. And then I'm going to say, use, no, nope, let me change your mind. So this is going to be a span. Span makes more sense in this case. And then I'm going to use, uh, I use divs instead of paragraphs. So I'm going to have a div here, a div here, a div here. And then my paragraph goes in there. And then the same thing, write this down. And the same thing for page two, my title in a span, and then my three divs. Then just for good measure, I'm going to fill this third page out because it looks kind of lonely. Okay, so now that we have things set up the right way with containers in the future, if we wanted to reorganize the layout of the page, of all the pages actually, because we want them to have a consistent look and feel, what we do is we give each of, the, uh, each of these divs what's called a class. And we'll go into more detail about this when we cover CSS. But a class is basically a, uh, a style name that you give it. So let's say I call this um, you know, I'm just going to say style one, you give it to actual div container, style two and style three. And these also have the name style one, style two, or no, sorry, I'm sorry, not, not, not names, but the, um, the class, the class names. And then also here too, one, two, three. So when I want to change it in my CSS, I can say for style one, and I'm just going to generalize here. I'm not going to go straight into CSS. I'm going to just say, make it a column with a width of uh, let's say 30%, the style one. And then same thing for style two, column with 30%, and then style three, same thing, column with 30%. And what this does is when the style or CSS file gets applied to these pages, it'll automatically shift every, every element you define using a style. And I'll make it adhere to your updated CSS definitions. So now this one will be columns, this will be column, and all three pages will have been updated because you surrounded them with divs and you define their layout with a style sheet. So again, getting ahead of myself with style sheets, but just wanted to give you an idea of why we have these container tags and, and their purpose. That's it for the div, span, and p tags. I can't wait till we get into style sheets and CSS so you can see this all tied together. If you have any comments, suggestions, or questions, please leave them in the comments section below. And please subscribe, I would greatly appreciate it. Until next time, keep coding.